What's up athletes? In this video, you're gonna learn how I hit 110 mile per hour serves without launching. And before we get into the video, let's talk about the elephant in the room. You may be thinking, they treat every pro on TV launches. And we've all heard the phrase, power comes from the ground up. And the point of this video isn't that you don't need to launch or that your legs aren't important on the serve or that you don't need these gorgeous biceps. Okay, no, we're done here. No, no. <laughs> Quite the contrary. See, most players don't understand how the legs and the hips truly generate force on a serve. And hint, hint, just jumping or launching isn't gonna tap into the full power of your body unless you do it in a very specific way. If you just jump, you're gonna look like a toaster strudel that's just being toasted. That's, that's right, guys, a toaster strudel. A to <laughs> you're gonna look like a toaster you're gonna This leads most players to either not utilizing the kinetic chain at all, fixating way too much on the arm, arming the serve, and overall feeling tight, or they complicate the serve, adding in all these movements, like the limbo, snapping the front hip, and they end up looking like an acrobat. <laughs> so this video is about eliminating those things that waste our energy and waste our time, quite frankly, so that we can simplify the serve and really focus in on these key fundamentals that lead to the real results on the court. So with that said, we're gonna cover three keys that are prerequisites to launching that are gonna help you to start generating more power and more importantly, transferring that power from your legs to your trunk all the way to your racket for that effortless whip-like pop. Let's get into the video. The first key is to develop a well-coordinated swing. If you've ever felt like even when you try to serve harder or swing faster, you're just not able to squeeze more juice out of the towel or the shirt, this tip is gonna help. See, ideally, you're able to generate most of the power on your serve without feeling like you need to generate any of that force from your arm. And your arm is just there to stabilize the racket and provide the basic structure to your swing. Developing coordination in your swing won't just equal more power, it's also critical for injury prevention. One of the worst things you can do for your tennis game is habituate a harmful technique. This is a technique that doesn't just decrease your performance, but it puts unnecessary stress on your body. Because a lot of the time, you can get away with it for a little while. You don't feel anything in your body, but by the time you feel that shoulder or elbow pain, it's too late. Your body has a breaking point, and by the time you feel the pain, you've already habituated the technique which means now all you have to do is step onto the court, not think, and then you're on a road to getting injured. And this is why whether you're playing for fun or you're really serious about improving your game, we recommend improving and prioritizing the efficiency and coordination of your swing first. Develop good swing mechanics, develop a super comfortable contact point, and then start ramping up the speed through the full body kinetic chain. It's like you're carving a path for the water to flow before you let the dam loose. And of course, the more comfortable and more relaxed your swing is, the more you'll be able to ramp up the power in your serve without risking injury. Now we're gonna cover a few tips in this video, but we obviously can't cover everything related to perfecting your serve swing mechanics, which is why we rolled out our five day serve power challenge. If you haven't checked it out already, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with your life? <laughs> this is the ultimate five day video series with all the techniques and all the drills you need to develop an efficient swing that allows you to generate that power and generate that control without risking injury. So go check it out by clicking the first link in the description below. Now, here are a few tips that you can immediately take away in this video. So step number one is in the title, we're gonna start learning our swing without launching. And this is gonna help us prevent problems like over rotation and falling to the left, which are so common on the serve. Step number two is to think of your swing as a pull instead of a push. I see so many players thinking of their swing as a pushing motion where they're trying to hit as hard as possible from the shoulder or from this wrist snapping motion. And a lot of the times that causes tension because a push by definition means that you're directing the force behind the object. So a pushing motion on the serve, of course, means having a shallower racket drop and falling victim to this infamous waiter's tray serve. 
So instead, try to relax your arm as much as you can and really focus on pulling your racket up from the butt cap, letting the racket lag for as long as possible. And then you'll feel this natural release if you make contact high and far into the court. And finally, tip number three for your swing mechanics is to utilize the three finger drill. It's pretty simple. All you're gonna do is hold your racket with your thumb, your pointer finger, and your middle finger, just like so, with your ring finger and your pinky finger off the racket, just like that. This is gonna be the ultimate test to the efficiency of your swing. Ideally, you're able to hit within 90% of your maximum serve speed with just these three little fingers. And if you're struggling with this drill, it means you've got a lot more potential for power. All right, key number two, we're getting into the good stuff, is gonna be all about getting more body rotation. And this is actually one of the core movements of so many okay. sports. You're done, you're done. <laughs> That's it, three strikes, you're out. Wait, shouldn't three it strikes. be two strikes though? No, the first one counted as two. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But most rec players on the serve struggle to utilize body rotation as a power source, either not rotating away enough or over rotating at contact. So to learn how to utilize more of this hip and trunk rotation on your serves, I'll try to explain it as simply as possible. And in fact, Dede has made a full video on the role of body rotation on the serve, which I'll link in the description below. You can go check that out as well. At the most basic level, when you start with your trunk and your hip, pointed toward the side, and from there, you push your back leg, this causes your hips or your pelvis to rotate forward. And this initial impulse of force from your back hip and the subsequent rotation of your trunk can help you generate tons of power. And this is one of the big takeaways I want you to have from this video. A lot of players don't fully utilize this back leg or back hip pushing from the ground to initiate their acceleration. Even if you're launching, you might be falling to the left, you might be pushing too much from your front leg instead of that back leg, or a big one here is you might be miscoordinating the timing of your back leg push with your racket drop, either tightening your arm up and not allowing this hip rotation to fully rotate your arm back, or dropping your racket early, and again, in this case, not allowing this hip rotation to be the thing that causes your racket to flip into that racket drop position. So one of the best ways to feel how your back leg push or your hip rotation can help you create power in your serve is to simply start in your pre-throw position. We've talked about this in our previous videos, but this is gonna be a position where your arm is to your side, like so, about 90 degrees. You're gonna have your arm bent about 90 degrees, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure your hand is pointing forward or even slightly down like this. Just shake your arm to relax it, hold your racket like so. And from here, focus on getting this powerful push from your back leg that's gonna rotate your body forward. And what you should notice if your arm is relaxed and you rotate your hip is that your racket is actually naturally going to flip back like so. This flipping motion is very similarly to a throw, what allows your arm to then release forward later in your swing. And again, by eliminating your launch while you learn to access this hip rotation as a power source, you're going to prevent problems like falling to the left and over-rotating with your body. It is starting to rain, so we are going to get out of here. It rained us out, and the last time we tried to record in the rain did not turn out too well. Daytree, you still want to record in this? <laughs> All right. Here's one of my favorite drills that you can use to start getting more hip initiation and utilize that rotation as a power source on your serve. You're gonna to wanna to start by step one, simply getting into a semi-open stance. If you're on court, step up to the baseline and simply get your feet about 45 degrees to the baseline. Now step number two, pull your hitting elbow back until you feel the stretch in your oblique. When you combine that, with rocking onto the balls of your feet, getting this slight knee bend and extending your tossing arm up, you should feel like you're ready to explode up into your shot. Now from here, we're gonna get rid of this racket because for step number three, we're gonna be using our handy ball to throw it at our favorite cameraman. Wait, wait, we, we didn't agree to this. It's part of the script, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you've got your semi-open stance, ball in hand, you're gonna do the same thing Simply pull your hitting elbow back until you feel that stretch in your obliques. And from here, try to push from your right leg as hard as you can. 
And what you should notice, just like if you were loaded up to hit a forehand, is when you push from your right leg, you'll feel this powerful hip rotation being initiated, just like this. So I'm pulling the elbow back, I'm gonna push that right leg, and that's gonna cause my arm to flip back and release forward. And then you could try the same exact thing with your racket for step number four. Simply get into your pre-throw position, pull your hitting elbow back until you feel that stretch in your oblique, press hard from that right leg, and you should feel yourself starting to get that powerful hip rotation into your serves. All right, and tip number three is to utilize more forward momentum on your serves, which you can see a player like Sam Groth doing here in this serve speed challenge. Instead of launching, he's taking this huge step forward like a pitcher would and pushing hard from that back leg. Now, we of course can't mimic this forward stepping motion because we would footfall and we need to generate tons more upward racketed speed for that consistency. But we want to utilize the same power source of that forward momentum. How? Good question. First, we need to focus on eliminating the things that might be hurting our forward weight shift. So the next time you're on court, check for these common mistakes. Number one, you might be staying too upright with your body in the load. And this is commonly done when players want to try to feel on balance like they're posing in their trophy position for Vogue magazine. <laughs> Number two, you might be shifting your hip forward, but equally leaning your upper body back, again, to try to stay on balance. Or number three, you may be making contact with the ball directly above your head with your body relatively upright when you view it from the side. All three of these mistakes are happening because you want to have that feeling of balance instead of feeling like your weight is moving or falling forward into the court. But if you look at elite servers, you'll find a few keys that allow them to get this powerful weight shift while still being able to get that just as powerful initiation from that back hip. So here are a few keys you can use to start utilizing that forward weight shift as a power source. Number one, we need to make sure that our toss is dialed in. If you're tossing right above your head like so, then it'll be impossible to make contact into the court and therefore everything else is gonna be more vertical as well. Number two, you wanna think of your serve as a forward truss fall. So instead of trying to stay on balance, imagine that if you weren't going to accelerate, if you weren't gonna hit the ball, you would actually fall forward like so. And then at the last second, right before you're about to fall, that's when you want to execute key number two, which is that powerful push from the back leg, and trust that this push is going to initiate your swing and allow you to transfer that forward momentum into tremendous racketed speed at contact. Now, one important note here is that it might feel like tip number two and three are contradictions, because if you shift your weight forward, then more of your weight's gonna be on that front leg, right? So it's gonna feel easier for you to press from that front leg, and it's almost like the back leg is along for the ride, not really doing much. If you wanted to maximize the push of that back leg, you would get all of your weight on your back leg. But of course, we don't see any pros or any high-level servers getting their weight backward like so. So it really is a balance of these two techniques. I recommend shifting about two thirds of your weight on your front leg while making sure that your back leg is still connected to the ground and feeling stable enough to get that hard press. Here's a great explanation of how this is done in baseball by Tread Athletics. You know, my foot is driving into the ground there still, right? I have all of my weight over that. And I think that's where some guys kind of lose this technique a little bit. Like even if they find a, a good loaded position, they start coming away from it. And now when they actually like want to go and turn, this leg has lost. Right. That, that's, the, that's the triple extension or yep. just early extension. So to practice this for yourself, I recommend again starting in that semi-open stance and getting used to that feeling of initiating from your back leg first. And from there, get into your neutral stance. And as you serve, you can actually step that back foot around to the side and run through your serves. Now, when you start pushing from your back leg and you start utilizing that forward momentum powerfully enough, you'll notice that you naturally get off the ground and you've executed a good launch. Now to implement this onto your serve, I recommend again starting with those semi-open stance serves. And this is gonna allow you to first get the feeling of initiating from your back leg. 
Once you get used to this, get into your normal stance. And as you implement the forward momentum to your serve, simply step your back foot or your right foot in front of you after you hit your serves. And what you'll notice is if you start implementing this back leg push and this forward momentum powerfully enough, you'll almost automatically start getting off the ground. Except now, you'll no longer look like a poster strudel. And hopefully, you'll be feeling way more coordinated with that hitting arm action so you can transfer the forces from the ground all the way up to your racket for that whip-like pop. Now, if you wanna fast track your progress and start seeing way more power and way more control on your serves in record time, then go check out our five-day serve power challenge. It's got all the techniques and all the drill progressions you need to take your serve to the next level. So go check it out by clicking the first link in the description below. And as always, athletes, do you guys notice the, the bug sounds that have been ringing this whole entire time? So peaceful. So peaceful. I love the nature, bro. Hey. <laughs>